And the combination here of, of the district heater system with heat pumps up to every building and the smart... The, I guess this is what you call a smart grid, but in when it, a grid of of uh, mm -hmm. warmth ra rather than electricity. Yes, but it's powered by electricity. Yeah. So the fuel is the electricity. So we, uh, of course, there is an electricity layer because nowhere uh, we don't manage uh, the network connection. No. Otherwise, no. So we try to keep that down. Really cool. Comments from uh, you two guys on, on Helen's presentation and the future here. What do you say? Enough. Yeah. Enough. Hello, hello. Uh, what I think is, is a bit interesting is, of course, the exactly what you came into at the end here. How much have the, can people choose here? Mm. Mm. Because it seems like some kind of central control. Now, now you live in this area, so we are going to con control you so it becomes very nice for you. Mm. No, I don't want to join. But you were Lennart Söder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People no, are I, I just convenient. Wonder. I they mean, that's want I, I wonder because it has very much to do with the regulation sometimes. You, I mean, it, it there has. is a discussion, and, uh, so I, I wonder what I, is I, possible. I see what you I, I think it's a very relevant question, and we constantly uh, discuss the business model mm. for this, mm. and uh, depending on regulations and so on. And also, what's uh, the delineation between uh, the end customer or the property developer and the energy company? And adding on, it's uh, the the mine project, for instance, is a joint venture, 50-50 mm -hmm. uh, uh, between ourselves and uh, the developer. And the developer is, of course, selling parts of the. So we, we don't know how this will work in the end, if we are completely honest. And in the UK, yet another model. But from a technical point of view, uh, none of these schemes uh, we, we are working on, uh, gas is not an option, mm. frankly. And they have cooling. So, and to put uh, you know, outdoor units on the roofs, it's too dense. It's, mm. it's not possible. It's, uh, uh, but the, for the business model, I think it will be developed mm. for many years to come. Mm. Also, how, uh, for instance, uh, the last one in Utrecht, it's more concession. Mm. We have it for 20 or 25 years. Mm. It's also very, very interesting because uh, we, we do think that, uh, for instance, in, uh, in France, it's particularly complicated to install heat pumps uh, in existing uh, collective housings. Uh, particularly in uh, Paris, in Lyon, in Bordeaux, uh, due to uh, uh, architectural constraints and, uh, and, and so mm. on. Sometimes we do have some problems to install some uh, new uh, heat pumps and, uh, and so on. And with that system, in fact, uh, the, 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 the problem is displaced from, uh, from the, 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 the housing itself yeah. to uh, the, 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 cool, the, the district cooling, the district heating or cooling uh, system. And so uh, it can resolve in certain cases uh, some, uh, some issues. We will actually build one in Champagne. Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> Let's go to Champagne. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> questions? <coughs> yeah, Martin, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a very interesting um, session. I have so many questions, but I'm <laughs> trying to limit myself. <laughs> uh, first, I have a question to, to you, uh, Frederick. Um, it was a very um, impressive strategic plan that you have for France, looking all the way down to 2050. I have two question, qu questions on that. The first one is, in the um, um, assessment of the peak power demand for the future, did you take into account demand side flexibility Absolutely. and the possibility for that? Okay, thank you. And the second question related to that, um, if I'm not remembering wrong, the CO2 emission factor for France, the average is around 58 grams per kilowatt hour. What is the projection for 2050? We have to be, uh, to be, uh, to be net zero uh, in 2050. So that means that uh, we will have to, uh, to, uh, to reduce consumption, uh, particularly in the dwellings and, uh, and so on. So that means that our big fight right now is to try to uh, uh, avoid 
to have, and particularly in new dwellings and, uh, and so on, to have uh, fossil fuel uh, coming in the uh, as a solution for new. Uh, because there is a there is a debate in uh, in France where uh, gas providers, for instance, are saying that the new boilers are seen as uh, very uh, efficient and, uh, and so on. That's true, but the fact is that uh, they, they will produce some, uh, some, <laughs> some CO2 and, uh, and so on. And we are saying that due to the fact, uh, for, 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 uh, for regulation uh, reasons, we have to reduce. For, uh, uh, due, due to the fact also there will be a constraint in terms of uh, supply and, uh, and so on. Um, we'll, we will have to keep, and, 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 the, and, and the, the third reason is the, the fact that we will have also a limited production of biogas uh, in, uh, in France, provided the fact that we change all our agriculture to uh, new uh, plants in order to make some uh, biogas, which is not necessarily the, the best solution, I think. <laughs> uh, so then uh, that means that we will have to choose what are the main uh, resources that we will use in the coming in the coming future and our point of view uh, we as a edf is to say that gas we are not against gas uh, uh, at all but we do think that mm -hmm. gas uh, is uh, uh, something that we should um, uh, keep uh, for uh, departments, for, for uh, points where uh, we can use other uh, types of uh, energy, particularly uh, some uh, industries, uh, but also uh, in, uh, in the, the, the uh, um, um, large transportation, such as uh, uh, ships and, uh, and, uh, and so on. And we, sh we should try to avoid, and that's our, uh, our big uh, uh, debate together with the French authorities, but also with the, the whole uh, system in, uh, in France, uh, to avoid uh, gas in the future, uh, in the future dwellings. Thank you. And that, that leads me to the second question, well, that will be to, to Leonard. You, you began your presentation by saying that we're talking about electric vehicles, we're using electricity, but is it really a coal-fired car, or is it a, a gas-fired mm -hmm. car, or is it a nuclear-powered car? I'm thinking, is that a really relevant question for the future? What we have heard from uh, Euroelectric um, a couple of years ago, Euroelectric made a pledge saying that by 2050, the European electricity grid will be carbon free. Now it looks like in the scenarios that that transition is happening even faster. Uh, I hope you are right. But uh, it's still, I mean, you have, uh, first you have the short term issue. For example, when I took my examples, it was from today. Mm. This is what is happening today. You said in the beginning that we should discuss the future. Yes. And I think that, of course, if it's so fantastic, as you say, that we are carbon-free in Europe at that time, that's fantastic. Mm. But uh, in the short-term run, that, that is still the question. I mean, the, I mean the, the issue is this kind of, that electricity in itself <laughs> is not automatically something that is good. Because the question from climate point of view, people think that if you move to electric vehicle, it will automatically be climate yeah. friendly. It's not. It depends on where you produce the electric, where, where you produce the electricity. So moving to electricity is only good if you have CO2 free production. Mm. And I think it's extremely important to remember that. Of Absolutely. Course. And with that point made, it, it is a relevant question now, but. I mean, we will, we will change this. This is why I we hope, are here. Yeah, yeah, I really <laughs> hope so, yes. <laughs> I, I would like to uh, also um, stress one more, mm. uh, one more question, and, and that is because we have now, during the day, we have talked about research a lot, we talked about policy a lot, we talked about infrastructure, electricity, people, training, we have been into all this. There's one aspect that I actually thought you would talk more about and that is um, the, th the sort of the people that take personal risk build up companies change things because they believe in something mm. so strong that they even can push 
um, agencies, etc., in front of them. And these are the entrepreneurs. These are the, the changing agents along with all of us. But since I will now leave the word to one of them, I would like just to short, uh, I would like you to, to put them in this ecosystem. Please, uh, Frederick, would you like to start? What is the role of the entrepreneur in the future of uh, heat pumps uh, and electricity system? For us, it's very, very uh, important. That's the reason why uh, from uh, uh, 10 years now on, uh, we developed uh, some incubators and, uh, and so on in order to uh, have the ideas uh, of what should be the next future, what should be the good ideas, and, uh, and so on. So that means that on one side, we do have research and development. We are working with uh, a lot of different uh, companies, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, universities, with uh, schools, and, uh, and so on. So that's, that's for sure. But at the same time, also, we would, we would like to have a, a sort of um, uh, side of the system mm. to see what should be the good ideas that mm. we could share, that we could participate in. And, uh, and, a uh, more and so innovative hub. Yes. You know, and, and for instance, we do we for, for, for the time being, we do have uh, some uh, um, new startup we are working with uh, together for for two or three years uh, now, uh, mainly in the data and, and so on, because we do think that in the data particularly, uh, there will be a new, a new frontier with a new like products. Like making value from data. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Leonard? Uh, I had three examples. I yes, of uh, course, that uh, is. Uh, I mean, yes. uh, you have Engenic that Engenic, have developed. Yeah. I mean, and they started. It was a startup. I know. And they started, and they tried to to sell this equipment to different. It's things. a boy and from Yevl, actually. Yeah, okay. <laughs> from my school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and then it was uh, Checkwatch that is also a startup. But True. then you can also say Tibber. One of the benefits in Sweden True. is these competitive markets where yes. you can select supply, which is not. Thank the you case. for emphasizing this. Yes. I, I see it now in a yeah, completely right. new light. So thank okay. you, we, we Helen. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, we work uh, with co smaller companies that are developing calculation mm. tools. Mm. How to be doing this because it's be proven to be quite complex mm. to uh, do these estimations mm. and also how you combine the architecture with the um, energy system. And uh, if you have seen these new city AI based city planning tools. Uh, this, I believe myself these days a lot. Uh, that must, ha I think this will happen for sure. Uh, there are, yeah. Yeah, and we, uh, of course, also uh, we have the ones balancing mm. the grid. Of course. Uh, uh, these uh, companies and several of them have been startups and we see, okay, they're doing a really good job and we have been acquiring mm. them. Mm. And we need those role models. And yeah, we need but the it's discussion the way for the